I want to go now to my next guest, which is Susanna Bryant. She, um, she covers Southeast Broward County and municipalities, but she also writes a lot about pets. And you know what? People are really worried about their pets. Now, I have Buster, the one-eyed Jack Russell Terrier. He's already like shaking, rocking, and rolling. He knows something's going on. He's nervous. Um, Susanna's going to help us figure out um, if, where you can bring your pets to shelter. So tell me. Tell so, me about pets and shelters. So Broward has one pet-friendly emergency shelter. Only one. So, uh, right. And they have capacity for 300 people and 500 animals. A lot of people think that you can just bring your dog or cat there and leave them. You cannot do that. You have to stay with your animal. Um, they have room for 300 people, 500 pets. They have their at capacity if everyone who signed up shows up. But we shouldn't assume that because some people will make other arrangements. So if you're in a bind, you can show up there and make sure you bring your pets tags, proof of vaccinations, and all that, and you may, they may have space for you. I, I, you know, one of the things that I know to do is if your pet is microchipped, um, it's too late to get your pet microchipped now, but take the time to go on to, the, to, the, to update your contact information if your pet is found they'll know where to reach you. Usually you microchip them and you haven't updated the information for a long time. True. So That's true. Yeah. And the microchips and the tags are so important. If your pet gets lost, those tags and that microchip is your pet's Link. ticket home. Right, because they can't talk. Right. And even horses. I understand people who, horse owners, are also microchipping and putting tags on their right, horses. Right, because we have large equestrian yes. communities in Davie and Wellington, so that's true too. Um, how do we calm these pets down? Well, I called a vet this morning. You want to talk about Xanax. Yeah. And I oh, my had, God, do I want to talk well, about Xanax? <laughs> I had, when you first asked me about that, I thought, well, the owner should be taking Xanax because, <laughs> because animals Hello. are like little kids, yeah. and they take their cues from, from you. And so if you're freaking out, you need to make sure that you're calm first. Right. Um, if your animal is still freaking out, I would suggest call your, call your vet. You need to find out about dosage the, based on the weight of the animal. Right. Um, the vet I spoke to said that uh, Xanax is not approved for use in dogs but it, or cats, but it, they do use it. Okay. But you but do need you, to check you, with the and, experts. And again, we want to stress, we're not saying give your pet Xanax. We're saying check with your, with your pet professional and your vet to see if your pet is able to, if it's freaking out or whatever, you can you can help it out. So and want to be clear about that. Your vet is in control of your pet's care, not us. And there is another option. Oh, what? So I talked to our friends at Broward County Humane Society. Uh -huh. They were shipping 175 cats and dogs on a plane to California, to the Bay Area, mm -hmm. ahead of the storm. And they put uh, essential oils like um, lavender and chamomile on the cat carriers because cats were freaking out. They also sprayed it on each other. Uh, to, well, I'm, to calm each Brett, other down. Where, <laughs> Brett, where's my, where's my chamomile and, and, and lavender? That's actually, so you just put it on their blankets or whatever in their pet carrier? Right, like, and get them, I mean, with their pets, if they're freaking out, make sure they have their favorite blanket, their favorite toy. Just, right. You know, pet right. them, stay calm. Um, and I want to mention, if you do go to the shelter, you will be able to take your dog out of the, sh out of the crate uh -huh. and walk it weather permitting and if it's the storm is slamming us you can still take your okay. dog out of the crate and the, most of the people are lining their crates with newspaper which is easily disposable. I have a tip about that and we're going to get to that last but what about leaving your pet at home if you button up and go to a shelter and so you can't take your pet what do you do I with your pet? I definitely am glad you brought that up we do not want and with Katrina in New Orleans with even with Harvey in Houston um, some people made the mistake of leaving their pets tethered to trees or out wandering just at the this yard can, that you can, can't do that you can't you that have not have been done you, seriously that's what oh, the yeah. yes that definitely happened in Katrina and the vet I spoke to we saw a lot of photos of heroes carrying their pit bulls and their German shepherds and little dogs just carrying them around carrying them to right, save them right. but there were some people who left their pets and we don't want to be known for that we no. you want you do not leave your pet home alone they're part of your family you take them with you. You make okay. arrangements. Okay. And if you are going to make sure, if you're going to a hotel, that they'll allow you to take your pet in. Yeah, that's another there idea. Were, there right. were stories in, uh, in Houston where after the storm passed, 
I have, it was People covered this, uh, People magazine. A family was made to leave. I think they had three dogs in the car. They had to leave the dogs right. in the car, and they were sleeping in the car with the dogs oh, while right. some of the family was in the hotel room, and they would okay, take shifts. Okay, I see. That's so make interesting. Sure, I mean, it's you know, right. talk about hacks. People are going to have to get really creative about they hand, they handle things like this. So. Also, mm -hmm. after the storm passes, uh -huh. do not just assume that your fence is still there. Don't just let the dog out because if you well, you down do power fence, lines, and that's true you for have people. To, of course, you have to yeah. worry about down power lines. But right. don't just assume the fence is there because you'll end up with a lost dog. Well, so. I wanted to get to my one tip, and my, my uh, helpful editor, Melina DeRose, I want to give a shout-out to her. She found this cool tip where um, if your dog, my dog does this, doesn't you can't take your dog out anywhere. So if you have a kiddie pool or whatever, you can put some sod in it if you have that or whatever, and use that as a pace for your pet to eliminate. So... You know, you, you got to get creative about these things, but you know, it might be hard to get your hands on some sod because you're a little busy or whatever. But grass would be a great thing. What about cats? What are you going to do? You just uh, you can you can get things with cats. Uh, they have like tents with the litter box in them so that they can, you know, not do their business where they sleep. So right. those you those are other cat tips. Litter, um, that if you if you run out of cat litter, use. The newspaper. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. We have many reasons why you need to buy a newspaper, guys.